today everyone so we will now solve the problem that i give you from our previous discussion so here express the force f shown as a cartesian vector and we are also going to find the unit vector and direction angles since the magnitude of the force is given the angle 45 and 60 degrees are given so as you can see definitely these angles are not part of the direction angles so let's talk about what are these angles so the angle uh, theta is what we call the transverse angle and while well, the angle phi is what we call the azimuth angle the transverse angle is the angle coming from this side which is the hypotenuse since this is a right triangle from this side to x-axis it's either x-axis or the y-axis so this can be the transverse angle or it can either be this one while so azimuth angle is the angle between the given vector to its adjacent but this adjacent is also the hypotenuse of our transverse angle so what is the purpose of this transverse angle and this theta phi so we have to remember that to get the cartesian vector form of our vector of it has a form of ax i hat plus a y j hat plus a z k hat in which ax is the component vector a along x axis a y is the component of our vector a al along y axis while a z is a component of our vector a along z axis so by, by getting these components we can now find our cartesian vector the azimuth angle is used to find what is our az or the side of az because if we know what is the azimuth angle definitely we can determine what is the gamma here okay the angle gamma and through that we can now solve our az well the transverse angle we can use the transverse angle to find what is our ax so this ax is the adjacent of this angle while we can also use the transverse angle to find what is a y since a y okay since this side is also the same length with this opposite of that transverse angle so definitely we can solve a y using the transverse angle so it means when we are going to solve this type of problem where there is a transverse angle definitely there should be a, an azimuth so this is how to solve this problem let's proceed now in solving the problem so we will now solve another problem in expressing the force as our cartesian vector so this time in this problem so alpha beta and gamma are not given so here as you can see the only given is 60 degrees which is what we call the azimuth angle this is the angle from our vector f so this is our vector f and to this side okay so that is in the plane of x and negative y well this one so that is 45 degrees that is what we call the transverse angle so the transverse angle is the angle coming from our x going to this side so this is let's say this is the hypotenuse of this triangle because this is a right triangle okay so how can we express our force vector into a cartesian vector so so first let's determine first what is our formula for this okay so to get the force vector okay it's either you use the magnitude so there is a given magnitude here so the given magnitude is 100 pound a uh, 100 newton so we will determine its force so it's either force is equal to the magnitude times the unit vector or you can also use the fx i hat plus fy j hat plus fz k hat okay so this is the form so in this case i will use finding what is fx fy and fz so this is what i'm going to do means if this is my vector f my fx is just this one so this is my fx okay this component 
And for my FY, it will be this component. So that is my FY. And for my FZ, this will be my FZ. Okay, so I will get FX, FY, and FZ. So let's start with the ECS one. Actually, the ECS one there is getting or finding our gamma. Okay, and if we will find gamma, we can easily determine what is our FZ. Okay, so here, let's solve for our FZ. I will solve my FZ here. If this is the right triangle, so if you will look, Okay, so this is my F, and this side is my, oh, this is my FZ, and this one, based on this, the azimuth angle is 60 degrees, so therefore, I can find my gamma here, gamma is 30 degrees because this one is a right triangle so so in this case i can solve that fz using the formula cosine gamma is equal to fz over f and here so f z is equal to f cosine gamma and what is F? So that is 100 Newton cosine 30 degrees. So F say now is equal to 86.60 Newton. So that is now our F say. Okay, so what is our now F say? So let's find now our Fx or Fy. So here, definitely, there is a transverse angle here, Fx, and that is this angle and our adjacent, which is our Fx. So we will use this triangle. We have to name this side. So let's call this as, since it's in the plane of x and ne negative y, we will call this as Fxy. Okay? So here, this is our Fxy y and this is 45 degrees the transverse angle so if you will look here on this triangle okay so in this side so this will be my positive x and this will be my negative y so definitely this side of the triangle so this is my fx which is this and this one the other side of my okay so the other side which is the component of my fy and this side okay i can move it here so that it will be just the opposite of my 45 so this is also my fy so it's just the same so let's solve for fx or fy so here since we can solve fx, it's either using cosine and sine. So let's find the relationship of fx, 45, and the hypotenuse, which is fxy. And here, we can have, we can use the cosine, in which cosine, 45 degrees, is equal to fx over fxy. But definitely, we don't know fxy, so we have to go back, actually, this fxy can be solved using this triangle. So if we will go back here, so this is our gamma, this is our 60, and this side, which is this bottom, okay, which is the adjacent of 60. So this one is our fxy. So since we know the magnitude here, which is f, we got the 60, therefore we can solve fxy using this. And let's solve it here. So, what is the relationship of fxy, 60, and f? So, we will use cosine. So, cosine 
60 degrees is equal to fxy over f. So fxy is equal to f cosine 60. And let's substitute. So that is 100 newton cosine 60 degrees. So fxy now 50 newton. Okay. So we now have our fxy. So let's use it to find fx. So here, let's derive this one. So this will be fx is just equal to fxy cosine 45. So that will be 50 newton cosine 45. So the answer for fx is equal to 35.36 newton so this is now so this is now the component of our fx and lastly our fy so remember we will use this triangle to solve fy so here fy so what is the relationship of fy 45 and uh, fxy we can use sine so that will be a sine 45 is equal to opposite so that is fy over fxy so that will be fy is equal to fxy sine 45 degrees so that will be 50 newton sine 45 degrees f a f y now is equal to is also equal to 35.36 newton and this is now our f y okay so since we already completed our f x f y and f z so let's go back to our force so our force vector now in Cartesian form, it's fx. So what is fx? It's 35.36 i hat. So that is positive. So again, we will manually place the sign here. We have here the Cartesian vector. The Cartesian vector should be um, axis sensitive while they shown are not sensitive to their axis so we will manually place the sign so our y here should be negative our x is positive and our z is um, positive so here since now we are determining the cartesian vector so we have to place the sign based on their position so here our fx is positive so that is 35.36 i hat minus 35.36 j hat plus 86.60 k hat and the unit of that is newton so this is now the cartesian vector form of our force so other than this let's try to find the unit vector so there are two formula we, we can solve for unit vector, but since the Cartesian vector is given, we can easily derive this one to find the unit vector in which the unit vector u is just equal to what is the force vector divided by its magnitude. So it means what is this divided by 100, okay? So that will be 35.36, that is Newton divided by 100 newton so this one is newton so it will be cancelled out so i will now so unit vector is unit less so that is i hat minus 35.36 divided by 100 so j hat plus 86.60 divided by 100 that is k hat and as you can see so there is no unit because unit vector is unitless so the unit vector now is equal to 0 
35 i hat minus 0 0.35 j hat plus 0 0.87 k hat so i rounded this off okay so we now have our unit vector now let's also determine its direction angle okay from our previous discussion we already determined what is gamma and that is 30 degrees so let's find what is alpha so it's either so remember the other formula for unit vector is cosine alpha i hat then this will be plus cosine beta j hat so that is negative 0 0.35 and this will be our cosine gamma okay so that is the other formula for unit vector so i will use that so that will be cosine alpha is just equal to based on this 0 0.35 so alpha now is our cosine 0 0.35 and alpha is equal to 69.51 degrees. Okay, so let's write it here in our diagram. So definitely, uh, our force is lying on positive x. So it means the alpha should be not higher than 90 degrees. So this is now our alpha. Okay, so that is our alpha. And let's go now to beta, cosine beta is equal to so we have to put negative 0 0.35 okay so we expect here the angle should be higher than 90 degrees and since we place negative here so we will get an angle higher than 90 degrees so that is beta r cosine negative 0 0.35 and the answer for beta is 110.49 degrees. And if we will try to solve gamma, so let's try to solve gamma. So cosine, this is how just for checking. So cosine gamma is equal to 0 0.87. So we will see. So gamma is our cosine 0 0.87 and now gamma so roughly 29.54 so this might not be the same with so our gamma might not be the same with our 30 degrees which is the exact one because around here we already rounded off if we will use here 0.866 so the answer here will be 30 degrees okay so this is roughly 30 degrees okay this is how to solve cartesian vector if the given are azimuth angle and transverse angle so i hope this is clear